PBD, when we're, we're looking at uh, uh, entrepreneur, intrapreneur, I, I kind of find myself as a hybrid because yeah, I can create my own entrepreneurial efforts, but I have the benefit too of not worrying about a lot of things that you set up over here at PHP. I don't have yeah. to worry about compliance, I don't have to worry about new, new business, I don't have to worry about you know, uh, marketing, I have to worry, uh, uh, there's a whole, I don't have to worry about you know, uh, commissions and, and being a CFO. I can just focus on what I do best, which is recruit, train, build, and get my guys to compete and, and, and drive competition. You know, for somebody that's out there that, that uh, may not be necessarily be a entrepreneur, entrepreneur, uh, can you talk a little bit more about entrepreneur, intrapreneur, uh, and, and, and leveraging that platform or leveraging uh, uh, somebody that can take them to the next level. I mean, look at Tim Cook. Tim Cook, uh, you know, founder, Steve Jobs, and Wozniak take the company from zero to 100 billion. Okay, Tim Cook takes the company from 100 billion to $3 trillion. <laughs> Tim Cook is a billionaire. He's never started a business. I mean, not that it's a name that we know about. When we yeah. think about Tim Cook, what do we think about? Sure. We think about Apple, right? Sure. You know, you, you can look at Balmer. Balmer's right now worth what, 60 billion, 80 billion? I don't know what the mm -hmm. number is, but he bought the Clippers for 2.2 billion yeah. from Donald Th Sterling. Thankfully, that, ra ra that race is yeah, coming, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, And then now the Clippers are worth 4.6 billion. He, was, he didn't start the company. He was a guy that was one of the entrepreneurs. Gates started the company, and Gates is worth, I don't know, 100 billion, 120 billion. Balmer's still worth 60, 70, 80 billion. He's mm -hmm. right behind him. It's not like mm -hmm. it's that crazy of, an, of a number. No. You, you look. If you can be, if you can be as aligned to the role you play within an organization, everybody plays a different role. The sooner you know what role you play in any organization, the sooner you're going to have the biggest advantage. Not everybody needs to go out there and start a business, and not everybody's going to be a C-suite executive. Not everybody's going to be a CEO or founder, or and, and nor do they need to be. Mm -hmm. a, a, if everybody wanted to be a CEO of a company, if everybody did. You, you you wouldn't have the people that are willing to do the supporting. There's a lot of things mm -hmm. that needs to happen within it. So eventually, people realize. Like eventually, I realize, yeah, Pat, guess what? This dream you have of being Mr. Olympia, you're too tall for it. Six four, it ain't the height. Mr. Olympia is a six, you know, five eight, five nine, five ten, maybe five eleven height. Now, if you do want to go, could you compete in Mr. Olympia? Yes. At six four, do you want to be 400 pounds in off season? I do not. So when I'm in uh, Mr. Olympia and I'm seeing Aaron Baker and Cormier and I'm seeing Jean-Pierre Fuchs and I'm seeing some of these bigger guys, Paul Delette, and I'm like, yeah, I'm good. I'm not, I'm not going to want to be offseason. Greg Kovacs, I don't know if you remember this guy named Greg Kovacs, who had 26 and a half inch guns. He would, he would incline six plates. He would incline <laughs> six plates. I'm like, you know what? No, nope, bodybuilding <laughs> is not for me. I'm not going to do it. So to me, that was just like, yeah. I'm going to step aside. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something else. So... Uh, yeah, if you can figure out a way to position yourself with the right people, if there is the right alpha, right leader that you're working with that does most of the things you need to be doing and you can come and position yourself mm -hmm. and still bring value to the table, you're going to position yourself in a better way. Uh, I want to talk about coachability. That's one of the, when you wrote my forward for Faith Made Millionaire, by the way, I, I, what a great forward you wrote for me. It got me uh, all teared up and got me jacked. Um, can you discuss what coachability is? Because sometimes people know what they want to know, know what they want to hear, they hear what they want to hear and they don't want to know what they want to know. And then sometimes it's just trying to combine those two together. Can you talk about uh, how to become more coachable? Yeah, so, you know, uh, think about who's, who's a bigger alpha in basketball than Michael Jordan? Who? I, nobody. Yeah. Alpha? Yeah. Nobody. Yeah. Yeah. And why was he so coachable to Phil Jackson? He's one of the most coachable guys yeah. uh, Phil Jackson had. Mm -hmm. How did that work out for him? Six championships. Yep. Worked out pretty good for him. Now, Tex Winner is asked, who's the smartest guy ever you coached in basketball? He says, Jordan Farmar. He says, really? Jordan Farmar? Yeah. Which Jordan Farmar? The Jordan Farmar that played Lakers? Yeah. He's the smartest guy? Hmm. He says, yeah, you couldn't teach him anything. He knew everything. Hmm. So what happened to Jordan Farmar? He went and played in Europe or Asia or China or Puerto Rico, whatever. Done. He had a great game. Okay. But he knew everything. You couldn't teach the guy anything, okay? In life, you know, this idea, like even right now where I'm at, I got a bunch of teachers around me teaching. I could be talking to a kid that's 16 years old who's been painting for five years. The guy knows more about painting than me. He's the teacher, I'm the student. Age is not the idea when it comes down to yeah. learning. It's a concept that you choose to continue doing uh, to get better. And coachability... You know, I, I, I uh, had a guy, have a guy that has been in business with me for, for a while. And I, I used to work with him years ago. And I used to say, man, this guy's 
super conceited, arrogant. This guy is very cheap, and this guy's got this entitled attitude. If he loses this, he's going to do good. Kept showing up. Every two years, ooh, he would lose it. He would show back up. Four, oh, he would show back up. Six, oh, he would show back up. And it would show back up. And he eventually, you would hear, oh, this guy, you know, he knows it all. He's this, he's that. His idea was he wanted to say, I know everything. You can't do this and da 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 I'm this, 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 that. It's okay, great. How to work out for you, you know? And, and then eventually what you don't realize is you produce those types of people in your life. And by the way, here's what's great about it. What's great about it is when somebody says, well, what if your way of teaching isn't the best way? Okay, so now you have two risks. If you think you are better than the coach, go prove it. The risk you have is risk of not a proven method that you think you can do it better, but go prove it. If you do, you were right. If you don't, the market's going to say you were wrong. Sometimes we have guys that the coach that was coaching was too content and too casual and soft and conceited and you know cheap mm -hmm. and entitled. And he found somebody that was better than him. And this person was the better teacher. And that person's trying to coach. This guy's like, no, nah, man, I don't think you're right. So it's also making sure the coach is the right coach. It's not just being blind, yeah. you know, following anybody that whatever they're teaching you is, you know, yeah, I'm going to go and listen to this guy because of what? No, you need the right coach as well. So if you're lucky enough to choose the right coach and if you're able to be coachable, you, you have the highest potential of winning at the highest level. Speaking of Michael Jordan, his, uh, uh, Bob Knight just passed away yep. uh, this, this past week, yep. uh, coach of uh, Indiana uh, uh, Hoosiers. And he was Michael Jordan's coach during the Olympics. And uh, there's a quote by, uh, I forgot who the, the player was, but he was talking about how his relationship was with Michael. He said he made Michael cry. Right? He made Michael cry because he said, Michael, that, that, was your, that wasn't your best game. Well, how, come you, how come you're cheating us all about not giving us your best game? It got Michael to cry. It got him pissed off. But that was Bob Knight's strategy to get them to improve for the next game, to re-deliver. You know, they asked Michael, they said, so how different is it playing with Bob Knight, Bobby Knight versus uh, Dean Smith? He says, well, you know, uh, Coach Knight uh, uh, curses a little bit more than <laughs> Coach Smith because Coach Smith doesn't curse. But you know what book Bobby Knight wrote? He wrote a book called The Power of Negative Thinking. He, he, and you know, what, you know what his concept of negative thinking was? It's not being negative. It was you can't do it. Mm. You ain't tough enough. You ain't strong enough. You're going to be soft. Let's see if you can uh, hang in when th times get tougher. Like that scene where, uh, 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 is it Edelman? Edelman is uh, the, the, the modern-day Wes Welker when he had Wes Welker. Wes Welker played with Tom Brady for eight years, never won yeah. a championship. But that scene with Edelman, you're old. Yeah. You're old. You can't do it. You're old. <laughs> you're too old for this. And Brady's just getting angry. It's like, man, you know, it's like, you're too old. You're too old. And, um, you know, so for me, the power of negative thinking doesn't work on everybody. Somebody may be watching and say, well, that doesn't work. But the power of negative thinking worked on Jordan. Sure did. It worked on him. The goat. It yeah. would work on Kobe. It, it works on Brady. But yeah. it doesn't work on, yeah. you know, Barbosa. It doesn't work on, you know, certain uh, uh, personalities that internalize that. And maybe I am bad. And maybe I am this. And maybe I am that, you know. So if you like that clip, please watch this one right here. If you want to see the full podcast, click right here.